today's video is all about ArcBlock, a total solution for building decentralized application. Today, we're going to be doing a deep dive into this project, looking into the team, the tokenomics, the utility, and the overall value proposition, looking into this project to figure out whether it should make it to our portfolio for the up and coming bull run. So you know what? Let's talk about the news. Let's analyze the charts and let's strategize to capitalize. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and let's get right into it guys. If you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome. On the channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all the altcoins looking for opportunity. And the question is, is ArcBlock the opportunity? You know, we do deep dives here on the channel once a week. We do release a deep dive on projects that you guys vote on. If you want to vote on the next deep dive, feel free to join the Discord. The Discord is where it's at. In the Discord, you can vote and also request deep dives on all your favorite projects. So feel free to join and be a part of that community. And today we're going to be looking at ArcBlock. Of course, ArcBlock has been buzzing about um, throughout the community in the last little while. And, you know, at first glance, it looks pretty good. And of course, today we're going to be doing a full, full review. We're going to be looking at the good, the bad and the ugly. We're going to be using the website as the main platform to navigate the project, figuring out whether the team has given all, uh, all the fundamentals necessary to get fundamentally bullish, right? Particularly from a retail investor perspective, as we do see the retail market is going to start flocking into the crypto space. We need to give them all the equipment necessary necessary to get bullish here so that we can see you know mass adoption and growth and all that good stuff and obviously the token itself you know what about the token what kind of utility does it offer the the holders and 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 users of the network okay so that's what we're going to be doing today obviously looking into arc block in a bit more detail all right guys let's begin let's see what's going on here you know, at first glance, we see, you know, a very interesting page here, a landing page with a lot of icons, a lot of capabilities. I can see that they're, what they're trying to uh, let us know is that um, some of these, um, it's a, basically, ArcBlock has a lot of utility, a lot of application, um, applications in itself. NFT Studio, AI, uh, GNE, Creator Studio, uh, Aastro, and more. And then it's got components, which the Blocklet Launcher, the Blocklet Store, Web3 Kit, and you can read that more and this has to do more with the back end i would say for the development side and then you have the framework which is the server the blocklet framework and here I'm, I'm getting further back into the back end and how everything is going to be, um, let's say, um, built onto the network. And then you have storage, of course, decentralized uh, storage is important. And here they say spaces is, is, is a decentralized storage space protocol based on did spaces can combine traditional cloud storage. And this is very important, um, such as um, um, potentially Google and AWS and obviously decentralized, which is IPFS. And this is very, very, very important, to, uh, I think, going forward within this whole deep dive is because the decentralized aspect of this project is something that I want to focus on a little bit here. Blockchain um, it has its own blockchain. This is where a little bit of ambiguity comes into this overall project. Is it a layer one? Is it a layer two? What is it? And that's a very difficult thing for uh, especially a newcomer, a retail investor, even myself, to be honest, it is still very um uncertain and despite that I was able to get some of my questions answered by team members in fact the ceo himself you know it's still not a very very clear package and that has a lot to do with communication and marketing you know there's not a clear understanding of what exactly does arc block do and offer and when there's no clear focus it's either it's trying to um, basically solve too many problems or maybe in itself it's that their communication is not clear and they need to get somebody um to really get this this uh, product service whatever you want to call it um blocks uh, uh, software solution to have a nice packaging so that we can really understand not only the current um, scenario that they're involved in, but also where this project is going moving forward. Okay, and we'll talk about that as well because uh, unfortunately there is no roadmap. I could not find a roadmap, a roadmap on ArcBlock, which is a very very unfortunate thing. Okay, because when you have ambiguity, you start to look for um, such details. You start to look for 
proof evidence um some sort of um you know communication that can give you a bit of um confidence to move forward whether you're gonna you know buy some tokens and hold some tokens stake some tokens whatever you know engage with the network and, and be a part of the ecosystem and that's very important because right now there's a bit of an issue without you know lack of a bit of communication so that's my general perspective here now going forward now i know i'm staying right here i didn't even move yet and i have a mouthful but i i definitely need to address something guys i went through a lot of this i click through these and you feel free to do it on your own like i'll click the first one right and technically the first one should be the best one and you start to look at what it has to offer number one um you know you get into a bit of a description of what nft studio is right fine sure um you get a few posts blog posts which are great of course talking um uh, getting um you know information out to uh, the um end user fine then you start going to nft studio site and you open that and you start to get into the depth of the project and you start looking okay nice and clean overly clean overly clean to the point i don't know if even that's possible because clean websites are great but when it's overly clean it almost looks template it almost uh, looks like a template you keep on going down it looks overly clean again and then you see um, it now supports, you know, base. Okay, that's a good thing. You know, moving forward, we're seeing base kind of pick up a little bit with momentum and interest and and all of that being another um, layer on ETH, which is a good thing. Um, and then you keep on going down and more template look, very template, very vague, very almost like just put here to have a, a, a spot reserved, right? Maybe for future, you know, implementation. I don't feel like this is a working product as I'm looking on the website and it looks very, and there's there's nothing here like if you want to see some of the nfts they got girl base okay i think that you know a little bit more of a tasteful approach might be a little bit better and with this regard and then you have this which is a totally different application if you go back to the website you know you have this um astro okay ai astrology which is a different application so technically you're like double dipping here for, between in the nft studio and the, it just you know i feel like some of these applications are not complete and ready now let's be clear arc block right now at the current moment it's a very small project so i'm okay with that i'm i am i understand that things are in development and i'm, I'm honestly open but if we're gonna uh, attach or give some credit for their ecosystem we have to give credit how uh, at the current state the current state it's still super underdeveloped all these logos are either in work in progress or super underdeveloped or non-existent there's some of these that say coming soon and this is something that we have to understand even though they have the logos even though they have the icons this right here is just a a, a face there's no real utility just just yet here that really is going to convince a, 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 a developer to get involved I'll be honest, although the, this looks great. And, um, you know, I give credit to the the founder, the CEO that, you know, took his time out of his day to, you know, speak with me and, and answer some questions. But he felt like this was a great explanation. But I feel like this, this is a great explanation as to where they want to be, not where they are right now. This is not a good value proposition at the current moment, right? So we're looking future. Now, the components on the other end, I feel like there's a little bit more. You can check out their block store. Like, for example, I think this would be a better... Um, um, visual or a better let's see let's get off of some of these tabs so we can keep organized now app store for blocklets let's look at the official store and we'll talk about what all this is in a second okay don't worry about that and you can see there's there's a whole interface and there's a there's a store you can actually buy uh, you know use some of these apps for free you can see there's free blocklets and you can get involved here by launching them and using them and we'll talk about blocklets are in a moment but you can see at least this side of what they're offering is a little bit more developed and i would say that's this is probably the most developed thing that i've seen now you can see there's a little bit of repetition in some of this so you can see that really um I, I question who developed these like it could be the team itself which is still great you know in in-house development of some of these tools of these blocklets are great um but is this um you know any third-party development that's where the real value is because i think this is what we're, they're going for when you have a marketplace where you really want is to get third-party involvement and have a whole marketplace where you can see a, an ecosystem here where people are buying selling these assets but i don't know you know where, where they're from and who's creating them and there's no proof of 
you know, development uh, support in this case. Now, let's keep on going. So I know I'm spending a little bit of time here, but it's very important that you guys click around. Now, storage, again, we'll talk about this in a second. This is another project that they have under the belt. So they have a lot going on here. And again, it's all in a bit of a work in progress. Blockchain, they have their own blockchain here, guys. The, and what's very important is that we understand that blockchain technology obviously comes, it's a software solution. And as a layer one, it's one solution. As a layer two, it's another solution. And from reading the white papers and speaking to the founder, you know, it did give me the sense that this is a project that wants to be chain agnostic. And what that means is that it doesn't really belong to any chain, which is for me problematic because then are you really, are you really a blockchain company are you a blockchain project or are you just a facilitator someone that creates software and that just uses blockchains that already exist now if that's your you know protocol totally fine you know i appreciate the value proposition in, in in itself but then it becomes a level of centralization that bothers me right because really then you're not a you're not a, a crypto project you're just a facilitator that aggregates all these chains and uh, and releases applications for these chains and and it's still a value it's still very valuable but are you decentralized and if this is your structure how are you going to centralize your organization? And this is what I, I want to go forward and we'll talk about, you know, the organizational aspect of this in a second. So I know I'm bouncing around a little bit, guys, but a lot comes to my mind as I'm just on the landing page, as you can see, uh, which is important that, you know, potentially I get some of this, um, these ideas out there to you guys. Uh, so there's their own network, of course, that's great. You have their own layer one. I don't see anything happening here. And I want to quickly go to CoinGecko and you can see that on CoinGecko, their main contract is still Ethereum. So it looks like they are still an EVM compatible or EVM Ethereum based project launched on um, Ethereum. So technically they're a, an Ethereum token. They're not a coin. So this is what I want to say here is that the, the white papers, um, you know, talk about coins and talk about tokens. Really, they're a token if they're Ethereum uh, built on Ethereum or, you know, so there's a lot of ambiguity here as to what are you? You know, and for a newcomer to the space um, that are that we're uh, potentially going to see a wave of retail investors, you need to be very clear about that, right? Right now, there's no clarity as to what are how do you represent blockchain tech other than having a blockchain here and where's your utility? That's very important. Now, their ABT network is a billing and operating support system. So very, very, very back end, I'm assuming here. And that's their that's their layer zero, perhaps. You know what I mean? Where they get, eventually they can d deploy layer ones on, or even if it's a layer one, they can b deploy projects on. Like, honestly, at this point, there's very, very little certainty as to how this structure works. And in my opinion, obviously, guys, do your research, do your thing. You know, if, if, if um, there are things that I'm missing in this deep dive, feel free to let me know in the chat and of course or in the comment section of course and of course i'll do updates and, and and get back to the community but at this current moment as a retail um investor as a retailer trying to do research there's a lot of ambiguity now there's identity which you guys know that you know with the privacy narrative coming up a little bit hot especially politically this is something very important there's a wallet um a, a name service i went into this this is ens very similar to ens where is it ens um it's somewhere around here where you can get your um, domain, yeah, domain service. I went on the application, feel free to do it yourself. And it is very, very bare bones basic to the point that it seems like it may not be real. I'll be honest, I'm not saying that it's not because I didn't buy a DNS um, a domain from them or anything like that. But you can see that it looks very, very like um, like a cover, like a shell website and, you know, very template. And there are some domains to be bought, but they're very, very like um, they're domains that are not really sought after and things like that. So feel free to look into all of this. OK, guys, because I feel like like I said, it's either very underdeveloped or uh, non-existent. Check it out. I don't know. Uh, I, or we're really early here on block uh, on arc block that's one of the things that i premise while i'm doing all of this and that's it that's the web that's their main landing page okay it's not a bad approach because really everything's laid out here very clean cleanly and what they offer okay so there's some articles feel free to do that i have a lot of these tabs of documentation i have a lot of these tabs ready to go you can see that if you want to learn about each of these applications there's a, a blog post or a bit of documentation with regarding all of them 
What bothers me is that their white paper is buried. And I try to find that white paper and I have to reach out to them like, guys, where's your white paper? And their white paper is buried. So I'm right here, buried between guides, which in my opinion, the white papers and all the deep dives, guys, I've done 60 deep dives already. Okay. And all the deep dives that I've done this year, every week I'd release a deep dive and almost all of them, um, the, the uh, white papers are listed here at the bottom very clearly. You have team, white paper, roadmap, clean, 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 click, 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 get my info, get in, get out. And right here, you, you know, it's buried within all of this. I feel like the information overload can definitely kick in here. So what needs to be happening here is they need to really consolidate a lot of this, um, you know, create block lit, block lit platform. And then, you know, it, there's just a lot. And then more create block lit and then, you know, reference manual. There's too much. There's too much repetition. There guides and manuals and this and that. And I feel like, you know, it just, you get buried buried into a lot of the documentation the reality is is that the most important thing in all on all this documentation is this right here is the white paper and i feel like the white paper is underdeveloped okay and we'll talk about that in a second let's do that let's get right into the white paper quick let me close some of these so tabs so i can you know clean up what we're going through and you can see this is the white paper. I like the fact that they have this Gitbook type of platform. I don't know if it's uh, driven by Gitbook or not, but it's it's good. I like this um, interactive arc block, um, you know, platform where you can kind of get through uh, the different uh, aspects of, of the project. Now, we're going to slowly go through this. I am not going to read this all out to you. Trust me, guys. I know how boring that is, but I'm going to try to skim through and kind of highlight the important aspects. Now, what I do appreciate from a software development perspective um, is that they I, I, I quickly identify the problem. Because as you know, in this industry, in the software industry, and if you know my background, I'm, I have many years in the industry myself, um, you know, it, it, the framework is always solution you know what is the solution uh, to the problem that you're trying to address and if you can convince individuals that your solution is a viable solution whether it, even if it is a solution to a current problem or a spec or speculation for the problem you know a solution that is a speculation solution to a problem at least that you can get in based on some confidence so i really really do appreciate that they're talking about the different problems with the current blockchain right Poor performance, sure. Uh, that's arguable because there are a lot of great. And if they're going to focus on Ethereum, yeah, I get it. But Ethereum is, you know, borderline almost a layer zero nowadays. If you think about it, like it, you're not really meant to deploy projects on Ethereum nowadays, right? You got the layer twos for that. And, and this is a whole other conversation, of course, because really there are layer ones that, you know, blow Ethereum out of the water with regards to performance and and you know consumer friendliness and costs for even fees and all of this so what we're, what they're trying to do is basically you know attack ethereum which i understand totally because ethereum has its issues but why not look at other why not attack other layer ones that are definitely already front running all these issues and that's one of the concerns that i have is that um i think their their um focus on you know basically um, trying to improve Ethereum has already been done and it's already existing. So that's totally fine. At least they're bringing that to the forefront. And of course, this white paper has been written a few months ago, but it's not the point. Platform lock-in, um, platform lock, developers have uh, to decide which blockchain to support. This is important because as a developer myself, I understand before you decide what you are going to create, what software solution you're going to deploy, you have to decide what architecture you're going to use right and obviously once you lock yourself in with that decision it's very difficult for you to change because then you might have to reprogram restructure reformat or you know whatever it is that you got to do to make it work on another platform this is why we generally um for example um multi-platform um, you know techniques are always sought after because it doesn't matter if you create um your software for a particular platform you have the opportunity to take that solution, that software to solution, and take it to another platform. So this is something important. Now, what they're, you know, essentially saying, developers don't want to be locked in, right, to a certain blockchain technology. They want the freedom. I get to sweep, a switch between, use different options, maybe take a bit of this and I take a bit of that. Um, so this is what they're saying is um, basically they're agnostic. They can run basically on any platform. And this is again, although that sounds great by theory, very, very true. It just gets confusing. So which blockchain are you a part of? Where's your layer one? Are you a layer one? Or are you just going to be 
you know, bouncing from blockchain to blockchain and eventually basically uh, offer, um, you know, a token on all blockchains. Like, is that the focus? And I've seen projects want to do that before, guys. I've seen that already. Now that could be the case. And that makes them, you know, chain agnostic. And chain agnostic is not a new concept as well. It, there's other projects already that I've done a deep dive on that are already have that as a focus as chain agnostic. And it makes it very ambiguous, right? So uh, lack of features. Okay, that's another thing, of course, the Arc Black uh, platform. So what are they doing here on, uh, at Arc Block to, um, you know, solve the problem? You know, there's uh, uh, miners, of course, the blocklets are a big part of the whole concept which you can see that uh, basically they're moving from blockchain point one, uh, one point, um, basically blockchain one, which is Bitcoin. We understand that no smart contract, nothing. Then you're going from smart contracts to uh, blockchain three, which is arc block. And if you read their points cloud node what does that even mean because this is this is um now we're leading into deep in uh, i really you know want to clarify you know by them putting that they're basically putting a target as what do you mean like what is the actual t infrastructure in the back end for this cloud concept open chain access okay fine so maybe being able to um use different chains and be agnostic that way and that's what, that, what they talk about um above so you feel free to read that blocklet middleware which is what you know it allows allows um, snippets of code to uh, basically be reused and sold on an open market. You know, developers can create software solutions that are called blocklets, um, whether they be full on software solutions like applications or pieces of code or even um, an Oracle or something like that. Um, basically a utility, a, a function or a yeah, you know, just basically a, a, a piece of code that a, a, another developer can use to make their lives easy when developing applications. And these small little blocklets could definitely be sold on a marketplace. And that's an, an interesting incentive, no, no doubt, uh, for self-evolution. Okay, that's where, where we're talking about, right? So not bad of an idea. We just, you know, again, we got to be clear about how this works. Now, the blocklets is another revolutionary component that takes advantage of, um, you know, the latest microservice architecture. Architecture. So this blocklets is a high level application protocol. Okay, uh, platform blocklets does, and they get into more about what the black uh, uh, blocklets are. They're a little bit, um, you know, vague at the beginning. Um, so what are the advantages? Token optimized for best experience, built for the cloud. Again, uh, I want to I want to focus on this line right here. Okay, so Arc Block will um, initially build on top of AWS and Windows Azure. Okay, guys, and, uh, and then expand to support Google Computing Compute Engine. Guys, these are the most centralized um, services that you could ever, ever, ever get involved with. Okay, so this is the thing here now. You know, at what point does this become a centralized infrastructure to a decentralized infrastructure? And that should have been very clear on a, on a, on a uh, roadmap. Like, how are they going to get into a deep in infrastructure? They could use, of course, IPFS. That's already a decentralized infrastructure. How are they going to secure the seeds of the IPFS? Or are they going to use? Are they going to partner up with Filecoin or something like that, or another decentralized storage service to at least ensure that one seed is available at all given times and give rewards for those individuals that are seeding at, at any given time? Is this what we're doing here? Like, there's no clarity here. The fact that they state AWS and Azure and, and all this leads me to believe that they are very, very young or we just there's a little bit of risk here that it may never, ever, ever exit out of that phase. And that bothers me a little bit. I don't want anything to do with decentralized uh, centralized storage. Crypto right now, given the hot, one of the hottest narratives out there is deep in. They should be going straight deep in. Right, whether they host their own deep end infrastructure or partner up with a, d a different deep end platform and use their infrastructure, and that's a perfect partnership opportunity, in my opinion. Okay, so there's a lot of small deep end projects within their the, with uh, around the same market cap that they can get involved with. Okay, so this is something that you know we to consider. Major cloud computing players in China, very very for me, it's a no go zone. A borderline, like literally a red flag, where you're talking about uh, layers in China and abroad and this and AWS. No, thank you. No, thank you. That bothers me. So again, a good, bad, and ugly here on this deep dive. Uh, built with open standards. I appreciate that. 
you know, the Open Standard, Open Source uh, Association with, um, you know, the Ethereum Alliance. Um, there's a lot of good stuff here. And, you know, this kind of gives me the indication, this gets, leads me into the team a little bit, which we'll talk about in a second. So we're kind of, you know, bouncing around here a little bit. Um, ArcBlock aims to uh, build a scalable, uh, extensive and easy to use platform. Okay, very vague and that kind of thing. You know, uh, you know, design principles, uh, user experience comes first. Okay, performance matters, I understand. And the system will be built on an open standard, more repetition. The system will build upon an incentive-driven economy, like proof of um, contribution, let's say. You build, you do, you get rewarded. You create blocklets, you get rewarded. Now, I, when I say rewards, of course, we talk about tokenomics, all that kind of stuff. Stay tuned, guys. We're going to continue going. Uh, system architecture, feel free to look into this, but you can see that um, you have the hyperledger which is their own um technology but then you have the ethereum experience as well the uh open chain layer and the ab ability to get into different chains uh, okay interesting mobile apps web browser you know fine this is their high level overview of arc block sure okay um it looks it looks great what can i say like there's nothing really to be said there um open chain access protocol blocklets and this is where i talk about the various blocklets com uh, components right so blocklets components are pre-built blocklets um that form the foundation of the platform most of the are uh, the arc block features such as its token services identity services and anything else basically will be blocklets blocklets components are highly reusable and customizable it's almost like modular programming now i don't know if you guys have been around you know in the in the space um especially with software and things like that there's there's this app this software or online application where it's called scratch and basically you have modular program different blocks of code that you can kind of move around and build software without any code just drag and drop little colorful blocks and what this this kind of makes me feel like that this is what they're trying to achieve maybe not as as elemental but somewhere to that effect where you know individuals can make these blocklets of code and you know whether they be let's see if i can find the exact wording because i remember reading it before I'll find it, um, you know, they, whether it be full applications or, or whatever the case is, um, you know, these components can be used to create software um, and, and uh, software solutions on ArcBlock. But the best part is, is that other developers can, you know, use them and they can be shared across the community, improving the overall, um, you know, basically the um environment of blocklet you know if the ecosystem grows because there's more blocklets and makes it easier to develop application you can see that the ecosystem will grow a lot faster and i understand that you know um you know back-end support for development is very very important i put a lot a lot of emphasis on that when i do my deep dive so i appreciate that aspect of things for sure um so application to get up and running fast of course you see what i mean incorporate our pre-built blocklets components and even third party party ones that other developers are going to create to make things go faster and build that um ecosystem uh, what else do we they have let's see i know they could get into a bit of more see it's a little bit everywhere but we'll find we'll find things decentralized um a pub sub gateway marketplace and token economy cloud nodes this is where things get a little bit iffy the nodes the cloud nodes are going to be on aws and so on and so forth and all these other centralized centralized um, infrastructures that already exist now some of the concepts out there kind of you know are that are floating around amongst the communities that arc block is a, a centralized um aws um project and they're pushing this concept right now and i understand maybe it's in, in its initial stages but this is where it's at right now with regards to its cloud node so something to consider here guys uh core components okay open chain access protocol you can see there's different diagrams uh let's see we have the level one common chain apis uh, chain adapters this is another th concept uh, another way of um, creating a uh, blocklet so arc block open chain access layers enables platform to support multiple blockchain protocols so it's almost like that interoperability or that chain agnostic concept application developers can choose from several different blockchain no uh, node types and deployment types arc block chain adapters are implementations that can make open chain access layer possible and th this is the chain adapters as a developer you can create a chain adapter put it on the marketplace others can use it you get rewarded for providing it to the marketplace ecosystem grows and so on and so forth so this is where we're at 
So the plan is um, the plan to implement chain adapter for Bitcoin, blockchain, Ethereum, and Hyperledger first. Then after they'll let the um, overall uh, you know the ecosystem grow based on you know support uh, by the community. And of course, uh, the ideal scenario is is that that happens. Uh, chain adapter marketplace, like I mentioned, relationships with blockchain as a service. Uh, again, emphasis on AWS, um, and they do talk about the AWS, and they do talk about um, IBM Cloud, and these are very centralized. Now they do talk about IPFS, and they do acknowledge that IPFS is a, a solution, no doubt. But IPFS um, needs needs some sort of pinning, and that pinning is where we want to see some deep in, right? Um, and there's no indication of that. So again, there's that level of ambiguity. I'm not going to repeat myself too much here. Let's move on. These are the applications, enterprise, government, finance, medical, and you can see these blocklets that are related to or customized for each type of organization and creating that marketplace for individuals. Let's say you're in the medical in industry. You, you're looking to create an application for medical. On the on their marketplace, they're gonna have blocklets to allow those app types of applications to be built easier and more seamless. And that way ecosystem growth is supported. So again, good stuff on the blocklet uh, components. And they do mention here, let's see if i can find it um architecture codes mobile apps and short blockets are the center of the entire system yes we get it uh feel free to read through this in a little bit more detail again I, i'm looking for specific language but i don't think i could find it uh and when i do I'll, I'll definitely point it out to you uh serverless computing a little bit of ambiguity here but again aws windows the guys like this is a little bit of a problem for me when i see very centralized back-end infrastructure B a little bit of a red flag for me when uh, such an emphasis uh, microservice architecture let's move on blocklets types this is what i was looking for so um there's different types off on-chain logic off-chain and on-chain logic asset and resource handling smart contracts oracles uh blocklet and implementation blocklet components and, and these some of these are very very vague to the point that literally it means anything that can be programmed and be reused over and over and emphasis on aws ibm google and windows azure Again, guys, like how much more emphasis can we have? This project looks like it's just completely focused on getting this uh, the AWS infrastructure bigger. <laughs> like I don't know, I don't know. This is a, a bit of a problem. Uh, again, the blocklets. Okay, we got that clear. Different blocklets can be used for different applications um, and different industries. Uh, okay, fine. And that's the way we're going to build the software is using those blocklets, decentralized and secure. This is where things kind of I get lost here. I I, I really Really can't stress the importance of being very critical about their decentralization okay very be very very critical to the point that i feel like you should focus on the back-end decentralization based on the deep in and all of that because if they're talking about providing so um storage how is that deep in then i want you know then to focus on also the decentralization of the organization in itself and the decentralizations of the tokens because the token distribution kind of bothers me right a little bit and we'll talk about that in a second and we'll keep on we're almost done here scrolling through i don't want to spend too much time because a lot of this is very ambiguous and very straightforward in mac os http okay libraries supporting different platforms okay in different media and then this and then this, guys, Algorand, scratch it out. Algorand is no longer part of this. Uh, this was confirmed by the the founder, CEO, Robert Mao. He mentioned to uh, basically that this is no longer an aspect. And for me, this is problematic. There's documentation everywhere uh, with regards to Algorand being involved, and it is not. And in fact, it adds a level of, of confusion anyway. So... You know, hopefully you guys listen to this before reading this. The Algorand technology is not implemented at all. So let's move right through. The token of economy and service, ABT. This is, okay, service, token economy. Like, um, you know, fine, um, designed to general purpose. Sure. And then the miners, this is the way you get rewarded. Miners for resources, okay. Um, 
which is basically nodes. Um, and if you know what the nodes are running a node, you need AWS or self-hosted. But again, uh, self-hosted requires some sort of infrastructure and support. So I'm not sure if, even if they have that ready because they did mention that first they're going to roll out with the AWS and the Google and, and the Azure. Do they have the self-hosting components ready to go to help that happen to get fully decentralized? Um, I, I don't see that really. Uh, component miners contribute software components to the... So this is where the blocklets... So ch block like chain adapters blocklet components are ready to deploy applications you will get rewarded um, by providing those components so as a miner and as a miner uh, basically component miner which is not even a miner you're just a, a contributor to the the back end so i really don't like the language of miner anyway but you get what i mean okay so by you creating those blocklets and those uh, uh, those assets um you will get rewarded and also by being a node provider you will get rewarded the arc block a uh, block um, uh, marketplace allows you to obviously earn by contributing those uh, chain adapter adapters blocklets and other app full-on applications uh, that can be used and reused by the uh, by the um by the by the basically other contributors or the users of ArcBlock, okay? Token foundation services and application tokens. This is where, this is supposed to be the tokenomics. I think this is where they should have had some emphasis on the token itself. Very little emphasis, guys. Very extremely, un, uh, they, they need a lot more here. What is the token? What is it used for? What's its utility? What is the distribution? You know, and all of this kind of stuff. And this is where we lead into into some of the tokenomics okay so let's move into that let's see if there's something that we can pick out here before we move on so i don't have to get back here uh the arc block makes it easy to build your own economy um that's fine in near future icos arc block vacation so uh, in near future should be in a roadmap guys like you know it should be a nice clear roadmap there's nothing here unfortunately about the token let's move on let's move on um so really on the fence so i we, we should have a, a good grasp of what the project is although it is still ambiguous a little bit even to myself so i do understand now this website was shared to me by one of the team members this is and this is a third party now some may argue that third party uh, websites and resources are probably even better because really there's um a level of um let's say lack of bias you know there's no bias and and you know should be you know a little bit more of value in, in this case so let's take that with a grain of salt regardless you can see that there's a few images here on this website and if you look at the images this is the roadmap now i am not going to include this as to be set as a valid roadmap why because it's super outdated guys the last this is from 2019 so forget about it if they have not um, basically released any of these aspects it's actually bearish but i'm not going to get into that because really if the time was not taken to give us a valid updated roadmap on the website or on the white papers or anything guys there's no point of looking into this okay this is a uh, this is a little bit of an issue here I, I you need to have some sort of roadmap so that we can see where we're going with things um let's move on and then we go down to the uh, next one we have the team um and we might as well talk about the team this is robert mal chief um ceo chief architect i think he's the founder as well now, I had the honor to speak to him a little bit, um, but unfortunately, let's talk about their socials. Um, they do not have a Telegram. They do not have a Discord. Big problem there. Big, big problem there because that's industry standard nowadays. You, you, you want to get involved. You want to create community. You want to get marketing. You want to get hype. You want to get buzz. You want to get individuals like myself involved in asking the right questions and building community. Not only, not only do you need to be available, but you need to have the platform to do that. And although they did answer my questions on their in-house messaging system board, whatever you want to call it, and it is free for you guys to use, you go to their website and you can communicate to them. Let me just quickly show you what I mean. You can get right into here, I believe, log in, um, and you can get into their messaging system, but you got to log in and all that kind of stuff. So there's a messaging system where you can communicate with them. But the industry right now is all about the Discord, right? All about Telegram, all about creating community and asking questions and that kind of stuff so unfortunately that's not there because that's where you get a lot of feedback from the general public a decentralized environment where people can see communication whereas their in-house communication system their their forum or whatever you want to call it um is you know very controlled in a tight environment that is run by the team and although discord and telegram is also run by the team it's very open it's an open you know um let's say um 
platform or um uh, you know a space that is open to everybody to see so i would appreciate i would i would suggest that the team get into a bit of marketing here and that's one of the issues that a lot of people have been voicing their opinions about is the lack of marketing by the team and that includes communications communications is very very important because that's the way you're going to communicate and get that interest by the uh, the um the community now there is marketing so they have an entire marketing dude involved whereas i want to see some skills you know i have a marketing background i don't see any marketing skills unfortunately you know no offense to you know the dude mr chen but really there's there's nothing happening here there's no hype there's no interest the website is bland there's no communication efforts whatsoever and they're all outdated legal counsel okay that's great to have on board i guess if they plan on having legal issues um i never really seen that to be a, a big player on a team per se but sure um and then i'm gonna go backwards and look at flavian uh chief scientist let's let's look uh, take a look at robert mao for a second and then we'll get into flavian uh robert mao let me get rid of this let me let me get rid of this leverage and all these pop-ups okay let's take a look at what robert mao he's a founder and ceo this is his experience of robert mao he is full-time at ArcBlock, which is great, um, from 2017, so it's been a while, greater, greater Seattle area. So if you notice that there's other companies, let's call them companies, but they're all related to ArcBlock. And if you look at their official site and you go back to, let's go back to the main page because it makes things a little bit easier, you can see they have AIGNE, I don't know, AGNE, whatever you want to call it, and some other um, DID and this and this and that, okay? So if you start looking at, you know, his experience, you have the id and the same thing so he's the founder these are applications and projects that are built on ArcBlock, which he's subdivided into other founding projects deceiving maybe um is it valid maybe you got you guys be critical that's it this is the information that i found Take it, tell me what you think in the chat, uh, in the comment section. Let me know. Do you think that this is a bit deceiving? Do you think that this is valid? Um, I'm a bit on the, I, I just, I'm just being cautious here. Yellow, yellow flag. Let's put it that way. And then we keep on going down and we see that um, he's part of some councils here. Forbes Technology Council. Interesting. Okay. Uh, from 2022 uh, to present, of course, that's a good while. Um, and then um, he's board member of Blockchain Council, Washington Technology Industry Association. Uh, interesting. To present, that's over five years, if these are all valid. You know, Web3 HTML Working Group. This is a while back, but still, okay. You know, not bad. Um, and that's it. And then he goes on to co-founding chairman a board director of different companies microsoft research software engineer so he he's got a background he's stacked he's he's got a background he, I, I i could trust that he has the skill level based on his um you know his background good stuff um as a founder as the ceo is he hands on that's the question is he actually getting involved or did he hire um um you know a, a blockchain developer a full stack developer to actually do the implementation or is he just the engineer let's just quickly go back for a second and i'm going to show you his title uh chief architecture that's it okay so he's an architecture these is he actually programming is he getting his hands dirty we don't know okay so that's the thing let's take a look at flavium apparently based on what i see here he's the actual software engineer he's the one that is going to get his hands dirty and if we scroll down you can see that he's full-time at uh toast okay engineer lead and software architect of moniz okay um and then full-time right now uh chief and officer and co-founder at trezio okay and then part-time all the way down here from 2017 to 2018 for one year he was part-time at arcblock so who's running arcblock right now as far as an implementation uh full stack uh, software engineer developer whatever you want to call it who's getting their hands dirty on that keyboard day in day, day in and day out or is it right now that they're relying on the ecosystem or you know to grow based on contribution the blocklets and all of this Guys, I don't think that's where they should be at at the current moment. There's not enough there, right? It's not a self-sustaining ecosystem just yet, especially without marketing, especially without community. They need a community. There's no community whatsoever. I can't go on a Discord and rally people up and, you know, show them some 
um, implementations and things like that. That's where we get all that hype. So this is a little bit of an issue here. And if you go back to this right here, like I'm not going to get into the marketing because marketing clearly is not there. And then the legal counsel, I, I don't even know why we really need to focus on that right at the current moment. But this is a bit of an issue. Is he still part of the team? And if he's not, who replaced him? And how can we find out? No um, transparency there. So Robin Mao is doxxed. That's great. He's fully doxxed. We get to know who and what he's all about. He seems like a decent individual because he did respond to some of my messages. Um, and that was pretty good. Not bad. So let's move on. Then you got some a bunch of people that are uh, just basically advisors. Now, do we take these with a grain of salt? Are they part of the team? Not really. Are they, can they come and go? Sure. Could they just be, have great relationships with uh, the founders and stuff like that? Uh, it could be. Um, I don't know if these people even are still part of the, um, the council. Could be. Guys, fine. They got, got some good names here, Microsoft Japan, um, you know, but v, uh, VP of Liquid Hubs, I, CIO of Microsoft. This is not bad. Expedia and some other good uh, relationships with other, you know, groups and things. Okay, fine. Um, and then you got this, which, guys, I, I, honestly, I wouldn't even be putting this here right now. This is actually a figure that, you know, kind of goes against them. This blockchain three, like, what do you, what is this blockchain three? Um, yeah, I don't know, guys. That, that that language is right there. And then this, and then this, guys. Okay, at least they tried, I guess. You know, a for effort. So there's 186 million tokens. Um, that would be the max supply if we want to use proper vocabulary here, um, which I wish they would have. This is not volume. This is the max supply, I'm assuming, you know, based on chain metrics and what CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap are, um, you know, listing. Finite amount of ABT created. So it's not infinite. There's a limited supply, which is, again, 186 million. No inflation. Um, okay, because there can't be more tokens. And I'm going through this because I already, there's a lot of ambiguity. And if you're new to the space, I'm just trying to help clarify. All tokens pre-minted, no mining required. Okay. Um, sure. Algorand doesn't need, doesn't need mining. Algorand is non-existent into this project. It does not have any, um, let's say any bearings here. It's not involved. Okay. So this is a bit of an issue. Now, when we talk about all, um, tokens already mined and they're already minted so that they're pre-minted what that means essentially is the technically the tokens are in circulation all of them and what we're relying on is a token contract or a contract that's going to lock them up so a vesting schedule of some sort that's going to release them into the market bit by bit okay so just keep that in mind maximum tokens amount for for, for sale 45 percent already out there for sale they're in um they're on various exchanges and we'll talk about the different exchanges that they're listed on marketing and partnership support 8% with bounty compromising 1%. So marketing, uh, I, I can officially say even for myself, very little effort was done um, with uh, BTD crypto to get any marketing happening, no communication whatsoever. So a little bit of an issue there. Um, where's their marketing efforts? And this is a, one of the bigger um, um, complaints of the community team, team labs, 15%. So the actual team owns 15%. Remember, they're all in circulation. No vesting schedule. Okay, so this is, I'm repeating that because as I'm going through this, you got to start asking yourself, what does that mean? How does that relate to these numbers? Miners community rewards 32%. So this is the issue here, guys. Because there's no vesting schedule, and the, and, and, um, the founder made it very clear that, the, especially with the team and the community rewards, uh, let's talk about the team. Just focus on that one for a second. The team, the tokens are out there. 15% are in a wallet that is owned and controlled by the team. They could uh, sell them tomorrow. They can sell them right now. They can sell them 20 years from now, 100 years from now, whenever they want. They are free to dump these on the market or huddle through for the rest of their life, which what I'm trying to say is, is that there is a level of risk here with 15% of the tokens. Community awards, what is the strategy here? Who's, where is the mechanism to suggest um, who's and how are these going to be issued to the market, to the community, meaning individuals that are making the blocklets and all of this? How, what's the schedule look like? What is, that, what is the, the payment schedule? What is the reward schedule? What does it look like? There is no evidence of any of that. So uh, more ambiguity. Are we going to rely on the team? 
on a faith-based system to give us uh, marketing 8%, 15% for the team, and 32% are we going to rely on the team to issue these tokens responsibly so there's no dilution on the price as they issue these tokens, you know, to basically dilute the price on current token holders. We have to use a faith-based system, guys, centralized. That's what that means to me. We're relying on a central individual or a group of people, which I wish it would have been a group of people that is governed by a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. That does not exist here. So if it was put up to a vote as to when the team gets a certain amount of tokens or uh, where the marketing dollars get placed and how much or how the community gets rewarded and it's uh, the rewards for a community are based on merit basically if you contribute to the to the ecosystem via those blocklets and all the assets you get rewarded if you get if you um you know provide storage space or resources or hardware then you get rewarded but what what's the mechanism what, what is it all about? How does that work? No real emphasis here. It could be that the project is so, so young that they don't even know themselves. Maybe they, maybe they're still working on it. What do I know? But ultimately it's not there. So what does that mean? Risk. And when, it, when we're talking about risk, we're talking about risk to reward. And because there's a good amount of risk here, when I, as I'm reading and as I'm going through all of this, you have to allocate the appropriate amount of capital directly associated to the risk. So as you feel risk, just understand, be careful, reduce your position size. That's what I feel, and this is where the retail market is going to st slowly start getting impacted. How much are they going to get involved here, given the risk? Okay, so let's move on. 45% uh, is in the open market, ready for sale. We'll talk about it in the, in the second. Uh, the soft cap and hard cap um, for the public sale. Okay, fine. Ethereum, uh, I guess CMT, Cyber Mill tokens. What is that? That's That right there is more ambiguity. And because it's outdated, guys, could we, could, you know, what are we going to say? There's already stuff here that don't belong. And I'm not even sure if some of these numbers have been changed, guys, because there's no real updates anywhere. Let's move on. This is the information that we got, and this was what was shared with me by the team members on the um uh, yeah by the team anyway let's move on uh, is there anything here public sale ended already tge distribution launch uh venture road they got some funding let's see who's all up involved here and this is what i could get they got capital cap let's just look at the capital capital fund vc venture capital uh capital venture capital <laughs> capital uh, guys venture capital everywhere Okay, so what does that mean? Um, at what point, where do these venture capitals, co capitalists come in into this schedule? Um, you know, maybe the team, like wh who's going to be dumping on who here? Um, and, and where are those VCs, where are those tokens being hold? Guys, we know what VCs are about and they've been ruthless to the community in the last little while. And in my opinion, I would be very, very critical as to the amount of VCs, $1.5 million raised as of um, ended in uh, December 29, uh, 2017. Was there any more? Was there any more? I don't know. Guys, I don't know. There's not enough information here. You can see there's, you know, FDV, volume, and this and that here. Well, you feel free to check out those token metrics. And we'll, let's move on. Um, what else do we got here? Guys, you know, there's a lot to be said here, of course. There's a lot to be said. Now, I do have um, an infographic that I'm going to share with you guys. Obviously, it's going to be all over the socials. We're going to summarize now the overall verdict and what I found, okay? And we're going to talk about some of the concepts here in a little bit more detail and obviously as a summary ecosystem ecosystem focuses on developing a large one as can be seen based on the main website it does seem like a very very large ecosystem that they want to in, uh, get in, um, you know basically going and it, it, it's very it looks very ambitious it looks very good when a newcomer comes on that website they see a lot of options and a lot of things happening but dig click click and dig there's it's very superficial and it's everything's kind of still in development or non-existent or coming soon so eh, I'm, I'm on the fence there although it's ambitious and i like that and based on its market cap that's what we could what would that's what we kind of want it's still uh something that's overvalued in my book U uh, utility rewards it's at a, as a currency there's rewards we talked about the two-tiered reward system and then the tokenizing id certification real world assets these are ways of which they plan on using the token let's see how it goes but of course, not much happening there. That's the reality, not much happening there. Uh, sorry guys, let's go back, let's go back and then we continue. A roadmap doesn't exist. 
no roadmap because the 2019 is done guys we can use that and have validity on a two, an outdated roadmap like that the team robert mao he's doxed okay he's full-time employed at arc block and other layers of arc block so i made sure i made a sense of that other projects on arc block is that deceiving just to you know bloat his involvement i don't know let me know what you think in the chat but ultimately um, he looks full on, right? He It does look like based on what's on LinkedIn. Forbes Technology Council member and Washington Blockchain Council member. That's good. You know, part of an association. However, guys, there's nobody else that is majorly doxxed or involved in the team. I don't see anything there, right? Like the, the last, um, you know, the, the, uh, developer, is he still part of the team? Doesn't look like it, you know, and he was part time. So that's a bit of an issue. Who else is there? The marketing team needs a whole revamp. I don't know what's going on there, what where the marketing is. And really, that was about it. I feel like there needs to be a little bit more emphasis on blockchain talent. However, Robert Mao does have the talent. I don't know as a chief CEO and founder if he's the one or if he's just the architecture. And if he's the architect behind it, that's fine. But who's going to get their hands dirty on that keyboard on a daily basis? That's what's concerning me. So 7 out of 10 right there. The socials, guys, no Discord. And we'll talk about that in a second. But no Discord, guys. That bothers me. No, no Telegram. The socials, the followers are next. 41,000. Not bad. I'll be honest. Not bad. Okay, let's take that, you know, as it is. 43 followers for the last 30 days, down 90%. So in the last 30 days, things have been coming down with regards to social engagement, but I'm going to be clear about this. The entire crypto space has been feeling this, okay? It's not just, a, um, you know, block, um, block, arc block. It's of the whole crypto space is b basically feeling the effects of lack of engagement on socials. So this is a, a, a bit of an issue. I get it, but at least their posts are up about 52 percent so they're aggressively coming back into it saying yeah my ex posts are that uh followers are coming down but let me get aggressive on that so from a marketing perspective at least that's good but i would like to see exactly the engagement level on each of those posts that's a very good thing to go check out on uh tokenomics so 15 for the team 100 percent in circulation the community rewards are not very clear on how those are going to be entered and, and given and so on are they uh you know 45 percent for to for this for token sales uh, they're out there in distribution and this is a bit of an issue which we talked about it seems very centralized it seems because they're already in distribution what's the vesting schedule like are they could the team sell all of them today could the community rewards you know eventually stop are they behind a smart contract that's going to regulate how these tokens enter circulation over time how does this work we need clarity believe me retail investors want clarity so five out of ten for a lack of effort with communication marketing team get on it that's what you got to get on there and start making us comfortable with some of the the back end mechanisms and spell it out to us like a five-year-old you sh we shouldn't have to have a computer science degree to understand how things work if you think that's the case you're doing something wrong because the re reality is the majority of the retail market has no idea of you know software engineering so you got to bring it down to their level and it's going to be an easier sell for and uh, for the long run market uh, partnerships guys fud on microsoft and google partnerships apparently this is a, a you know a lot of people got a little bit annoyed and there's there's a lot of buzz about this i don't like talking about fud but this could be an issue for them because they lack the communication and marketing to counterbalance this fud fud on microsoft and google partnerships did they ever say that they were going to have that it could be possible since they emphasize aws and microsoft and google so much i can see that that could be the case and there's no clear strategic partnerships anywhere on the website where they should have example deep end projects i they should already be speaking to some sort of deep end to decentralize all those aws requirements aws and google should be out of the picture maybe it might be a little bit harder to integrate deep in but in the long run and in the short term when you read the white papers and you see deep in as a strong narrative for this up and coming bull run it would definitely be an easier sell rethink that i think that's a very important thing going forward as how you package um, the overall product in this case the software solution it is listed on some major ex exchanges as far as i can see on coin gecko it's listed on coinbase guys i'm not sure what's going on there but it's listed on coinbase and the rest are pretty um small gate hotcoin uniswap okay dex um and then you have bing x you know pretty small but you know it's there and the rest bitget small but it's there um 
but you get what I mean. So Coinbase listed on Coinbase, um, and you know, still having uh, you know, with tokenomics like this and overall uh, a project that's structured like this, I'm very, very surprised that um, they didn't put a lot more emphasis on uh, you know product market fit here um, before they listed them. I, I'm I'm really um, you know surprised about that. So a little bit of detail. Yes, there's has been a little bit of fluctuation in the price in the last little while. I think it's right now at about a dollar thirty-five or something like that. When I did. Uh, created this it was at a dollar 40 so take these numbers with a grain of salt there's a bit of variance here market cap as we mentioned 138 million 2000 for uh 240,000 more or less trade volume is very small not a lot of trading volume although there's a lot of a, a little bit of trading volume the majority of it is on coinbase uh supply 53 percent in circulation so half of them already let's say in circulation for sale the rest of them are locked up in the team wallet and this has been very clearly defined to me by um, Robert Mao, that this is the way CoinGecko calculated it. The reality is that they're all out there. And that, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, like I mentioned, if they're all out there and who's in control of all these, that's a bit of an issue. So in a way, I think that CoinGecko is probably doing them a service by saying, okay, at least half of them are locked up in a contract somewhere. Are they or are they not? Ambiguity, tons of ambiguity. I have no idea what's going on here from a, a supply schedule, you know, a vesting schedule scenario. A bit of an issue. Max supply, 160, um, 186 million tokens ready to go there. Um, of course, max supply is good. We don't want a risk of um, dilution over time by having, um, you know, inflation. Uh, fully diluted, $260 million. I think it's overvalued in my book. Again, not financial advice. That's my opinion. I think it's slightly overvalued given what they got going on and uh, given the maturity of, of um, you know, the information that got, they got available. So a little bit more, my verdict. And then these are side notes, things that I came across that I want to share with you guys. So to help you here. So it's chain agnostic, not really dedicated to one chain, although everything regarding documentation suggests that it's an Ethereum uh, block uh, a chain project, which means it's a token, not a coin. And if you read the white papers, it refers to it as a coin. And that kind of, again, needs to be clarified. Are they using their own blockchain or not? Uh, they have a, uh, do they have an explorer, which they do? And it, it, there's just a lot of everything everywhere bit of confusion token distribution is not clearly documented by the team we talked about that the only tokens not in circulation are rewards apparently and the rest are held by the team in good faith agreement basically now the rewards like even that like how are they going to be issued and are they apparently they're in full distribution they're out there on a wallet somewhere and who's making the decisions how they're going to get distributed centralized i don't know guys there's so much ambiguity reward resource miners computing resources computing miners this is these are individuals that are going going to be getting rewarded by their efforts whether they're resource miners or component miners uh, they're going to get rewards so some of the utility behind the token is definitely there no clarity on the reward structure as i mentioned um you know that would be good it feels very centralized as i mentioned no implementation of a DAO for governance guys that would change things a little bit because if the tokens are all in distribution but the team has no real and they're locked up in a DAO, at least the team has no a leverage over how those tokens get issued right so that's would decentralize things to a degree now of course DAOs, you know could be manipulated because really all you really need is to hold a lot of tokens and then you get a lot more um voice let's put it that way but still at least there's an effort to decentralize the organization in itself a lot of focus on aws a bit of an issue for me a bit of a red flag because who wants aws and in, 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 in crypto unless it's for testing purposes which I, I i kind of get that emphasis that that's what they're doing as their rollout phase one is aws but without a roadmap to tell us how you're going to get out of the aws and when is the timeline hard timeline to get out of there um there's no re or or any efforts to partner up with some deep in or your own deep end infrastructure there's no clarity there and with the fud basically lingering with um those partners so-called partnerships with microsoft and so on with google you know things don't look good from that front right and they do talk about ipfs which i appreciate guys uh, you know ipfs is you know um an older technology it's not brand new it's been around it's a peer-to-peer -peer network of course um and ultimately it requires seeds and all that and that's where deep in can come into play and they can maybe make a small partnership with filecoin or another project like that like filecoin to um you know 
implement their objectives what do i know ultimately i'm not the engineer here but the engineer or the architect here needs to make things a little bit clear and provide that information no longer has anything to do with algorand we see talk about algorand on many outlets and there's no there's nothing to do with algorand which goes on to the next thing is that the white papers needs needs up to date it needs something and it, and it needs details with regards to tokenomics i shouldn't have to go on a third party that also has outdated information um and rely on the third party if i can rely on the primary source what makes you think i want to invest now, I know some people might say, well, a secondary source is even better because they're going to vet the information. They're going to go through the information. They're going to be critical about the information. True. I'm not saying that third parties shouldn't exist. But if the first uh, party, let's call it the primary source, doesn't put the effort to at least put that information out there, um, how can I trust anything, right? There's no there's no information. No information is, is ambiguity and it's risk. So a bit of an issue there. I know I'm ranting here a little bit, guys, you know, but I do try to be honest and give you guys the good the bad and the ugly on all these deep dives that i cover here uh let's move on L little information on the rest of the team although the founder has is doxxed and seems like a very ta talented individual um you know i just feel like uh, the rest of the team needs more it can't be just a one-man show especially with such a an objective that they have the such a grand scheme of, of objectives guys they need a little bit more of a team that is doxxed and proof that there's some individuals engineers back there helping out good lineup advisors okay i'll give them that the good advisors how much validity or value uh, can we put on advisors obviously they're not full-time they're not you know they might hold some tokens what do i know but ultimately that's not bad no discord or telegram guys that for me is a big issue like probably another red flag i'm already you know teetering on one i'm, I'm, I'm getting into another like how can a marketing pro uh, uh, you know team not realize the value of having a telegram or a discord for me personally i prefer discord because you can organize your communications you can control um the the platform a little bit and how you can organize things and have the value of the conversations improve uh, and that's my opinion obviously but at least have telegram at least have one or the other or both ideally such a big project you know and not have that bothers me although they do have their native messaging system which is good you can get in touch with the team and robert himself if he decides to respond that's great um and of course that is a very centralized and that messaging system is run by the a blockchain and you can see that these transactions for each comment which is great i appreciate that no doubt but a uh you can't negate the fact that industry standard right now is discord and telegram a bottom line you don't want friction to create community you want the community to flourish in any environment that the general community appreciates you don't want to start creating a a whole new town square um and expect people to migrate even though i had to i was very reluctant to put my information on there um fud about the lack of marketing we talked about that and um fud on the decentralization of a and its a aws focus these are things that are buzzing okay guys these are not things that i made up these are things that people in the general community of crypto are talking about with regards to arc block so take it with a grain of salt now my verdict my final target i'm going to be honest here these targets are not i'm not a, a fortune teller i don't know what the future is going to bring however if we use quant as a tar as a potential target you know to get its market remember it's a protocol very similar like what quant wants to achieve or you know, maybe I icp or something like that i'm using quant because one of the larger market caps within its narrative and if abt can reach the market cap of quant maybe it does a six to seven x and really guys because i rate it four out of ten you got to take that target of ten dollars with a grain of salt okay just be careful out there guys there are some things that, that are issues that bother me do we make them bigger than they are or do we take them for face value and just allocate a, a, a particular portion of your portfolio directly related to the risk that you're taking 
all right guys i know you're here to talk about charts as well so let's take a look at some of this price action um just recently we've seen arc uh, arc block do very very well it got a nice run to the upside but then again we as we go up we also come down and arc block hit a nice top after a nice little rally of many making many higher highs and higher lows and then all of a sudden coming down to much lower levels to potentially buy the dip but let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail really generally guys the market in, in, in as a whole is doing this it's not like arc block is the only one we can't just emphasize that arc block is dumping right it, the general market in fact if you look at the chart arc block is not doing that bad because a lot of the other altcoins are pretty much at bear market bottoms pretty much down here hunting liquidity at previous accumulation zones at about 20 cents um, i would say that would be the level that arc block would have to get to to kind of match what the a lot of other altcoins are doing now that could be looked at as a very bullish thing or it could also be a level of which you need to keep an eye on basically say look arc block could come down there so let's kind of uh, let's make that important let's make this level important let's make it important by putting in a arrow okay let's i usually put my arrows in so you know we can say this is a green arrow if it does come down there buy the dip guys this is very likely especially if you hold support we hold support get structure blah 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 all that guys, kind of stuff you know reversals uh bullish divergences thing like that but let's talk about where we are right now the reality is, is that we came down to the base of this last expansion and we've been making higher highs and higher lows and one thing that we have to understand is usually when we start creating this, eventually what we do is get divergences to the downside and we can get multiple drives of divergence. Now, this is a broadening type of wedge, a broadening wedge megaphone pattern to the upside um, is a bearish pattern. Statistically speaking, it should break down. And guess what, guys? It did. Now it's below the 200 daily, not a good look. And it came down with some aggression, obviously not much volume, but it did come down very nicely and quickly. It got it picked up a bit of volume right into this area and if you exclude this you can see that it's not even that much let's let's see what happens when we readjust you can see that okay there's a bit of volume but relative to the accumulation it's not that much okay it's not that much but it is coming down now the question is this at what point do we see the bears lose their strength and the bulls stop selling how many hodlers how many sellers are left into this market now if there's hodlers eventually we'll hit that wall eventually we will definitely get a rounded bottom we'll reverse look at this buy up wick buy up wick coming back to test do we actually fall below i would say a dollar oh four a dollar oh five if we fall below this level guys it's not looking good we're coming down to 28 cents 29 cents let me put a horizontal there and i'll explain to you why i think that's the case and it's all about volume it's all about market participation it's all about emotion if we break below this level right and i'm going to remove this because right now this is not important anymore this is still important still valid empty volume gap that we fell right through could we get support at the bottom of the volume gap or are we going to come back down to test the dollar zone um a dollar or five type of zone and break below if we break below this level we have a fat volume gap below and these volume gaps are dangerous and the reason being is because they generally generally provide opportunities for the price to fall or rise depending on the direction that we're going and in this case look at that it looks like we are gonna you know fall if we break below because there's no volume we went straight up no consolidations in between and we can fall right through and hunt liquidity but guys we've already kind of tested that level we wicked to that level and got a reaction do we come back down to try to get right through this is the problem guys this is a bigger problem than you you, you might think because really um you don't want to be that individual that that you know takes chances to figure it out let's see what happens that's how you get wrecked so what we really want to do is make sure that we tread carefully here because at the current moment all we're doing is making lower lows and lower highs and as the trend currently is showing us that um you know it may not be our friend as far as our portfolio but the trend is our friend because there's no end right now and all we're seeing is a slow um progression to the downside without any signs of reversal only levels that maybe we should pay attention to that could cause that uh, scenario to happen now i'm just going to kind of like re uh, duplicate this and put one right here because this is also an area that we could get a reversal based on the little volume gap based on this current um, 
on bounce based on the the overall market uh, trajectory the way the market kind of feels sentiment wise with bitcoin and all of this it could be the case that um, it happens so we got to be very careful here okay because i'm not saying get in right now what i'm saying is if you're on the sidelines and you like the project and you want to buy in yeah get into a small bag 10 percent. that's it 10 percent, small bag and then as you build the structure you build that 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 bag you build over time and as you build the structure you should be building confluence you should be building indications that this becomes a pivot point now i want to talk to you about what that what needs to happen what does that look like we get a bounce here we get rejected we come down we get a bounce we get a higher higher low we break above this high great we go for a higher high right away we start talking about change of character right no longer are we making lower lows and lower highs we're making higher highs and higher lows and guess what 200 daily ema we're above it great we're above it now we're going to start to see the price potentially maybe that's too deep because if we get a reversal like that it's likely to look like this now we're above it okay and it's starting to look good because we can bounce off of this and then continue again. And then when we start looking at it, that it starts to look like a nice rounded body pivot point type of structure. Now, if we get bullish divergence into this right here, we get a bit of follow through, we get the back test and we continue guys. What else do we want? But right now there's no indication. All we have is maybe, maybe we do get that, you know, scenario right into here and we get that reversal. But until then guys tread very, very carefully. Let's take a look at oscillators for a second let's see let's take a look at momentum real quick see what we got here because obviously momentum is a great indication for us to realize that the market has deemed this very very oversold and there is divergence still let's reuse this line this line there's divergence on the expansion each time we do come down the expansions are getting weaker and weaker and weaker and the momentum the purple line okay divergence was invalidated we came down for a lower low but we're still oversold and this is the time to slowly slowly dca for that reversal no indication on price structure of obviously price action is king but after a long expansion like this it's likely that we're going to slowly start hitting a bottom now let's get let's take a look at the um the trend uh let's see what the trend oscillator is showing us trend oscillators are good indication of seeing you know are we done with the bulls pushing uh basically losing out are the bears showing weakness and you can see as we're coming down the expansions are also tapering to the upside and the emas are facing the upside trying to get into the bullish control zone so there's a bit of strength here and just a little bit in a reversal type of thing that it does look like the bears are being challenged by the bulls so not bad again nothing major signs of divergence are not enough conviction to actually get in especially when the momentum is not giving us divergence only the expansion so we have to you know be very careful here this right now is still very risky so based on that you know price action maybe the fundamentals now you got to ask yourself if i have a certain amount of capital to deploy on arc block how much should i deploy right now and what is that major capital that i'm willing to put in right that's one thing you gotta really ask yourself now at the current moment would i be getting into any risky setups leverage trades or anything like that absolutely not Okay, absolutely not. Wait for the structure where you are comfortable putting a stop loss underneath, meaning let's say if we get a nice W or inverse head and shoulder, you put a stop loss underneath and hopefully we get the reversal. This way you can come up with a risk to reward ratio. You can come up with a structure, a, a setup that integrates risk management. Because what about if we continue coming down to about 28 cents? You want to cut yourself off and basically come back down here and then deploy a lot more because we're talking about a dip through this volume gap, um, you know, maybe at about 62 three percent seventy percent dip from this level that's significant guys that's a good discount so what can be done as well is to have a big picture dca strategy buy a little bit now ten percent buy a little bit as it builds and if it does fall don't deploy more than fifty percent of your capital in this area if we get the structure because the bears will classify it as a bear flag well, let me show you what i mean we get impulsive down let's say we get a bounce we go sideways and then we got another impulsive down that could be the bearish case okay let's let's entertain all of this now here you can put a stop loss and then reaccumulate down here 
Here you can not put a stop loss, just ensure that you only deploy 50% here and then deploy the rest of the 50% down here. And that way, that way your average position is right around this level, maybe a little bit higher, whatever the case is. Upon the bounce, you're talking about spot only, upon the bounce, upon the recovery, if this project is meant to do what it's meant to do, remember from a bullish perspective, guys, you'll do fine, but if the fundamentals do not hold up, at least you've done your best to mitigate risk and deploy slow and steady and get into an entry where you're very close to invalidation. And ultimately, invalidation is when we start hunting this liquidity down here. Because if we break below the previous uh, um, low um, and start making hunting liquidity down here, the sentiment in arc block is definitely going to catch up to it and things are not going to look good. Because really, the people that took risk right around this zone are the ones that deserve reward. And you can see this was the accumulation zone and took off. Now, are we going to come back down to hunt this liquidity where the most um, emotions are? The most emotions are usually where people start to really change their sentiment and start, you know, basically um, you know, capitulating and all, settling on a loss and, and, and that kind of stuff. So we got to take it really, really carefully here with ArcBlock, in my opinion, in the medium short term. The market is definitely getting a few signs, very early signs of potential reversal. But we got to be patient because we've been dragged through this summer in to some really really red bearish price action all right guys if i've offered you any value in this deep dive video do the channel a massive favor slap the like button it does really help out the algorithm if you want to follow me on the socials the links are in the description below feel free to join the discord the discord is where it's at lots of good alpha trade setups fundamentals and learning material and if you want to vote on the next deep dive next week sunday release next deep dive join the discord there is a channel there where you can vote and request any deep dive that you're interested in and the community votes on the deep dive and guess what i do i do the research i do the video and you guys learn about all kinds of cryptos that are ready to go for this bull run guys see you tonight 8 p.m est take care have a good one and don't forget buy the dip